All right, so in 6.1, we are solving oblique triangles. So oblique triangles are acute and obtuse triangles. In geometry, we know how to solve right triangles. And this kind of is like one notch above what you guys learned in geometry. Some of you who did geometry honors may have done this, but I know when I taught geometry regular, we didn't get to this last year, so it may be new, but it's not too bad. So in a triangle, we have angles A, B, and C, so those are our capital letters, and then we have sides A, B, and C, which are lowercase letters. And then we have these formulas here to help us solve our oblique triangles. So this is our law of sines formula. We have A over sine of A is equal to B over sine of B is equal to C over sine of C. So we can use this to help us find whatever we're missing in our triangle. And now it doesn't matter if you have the side length or the sine on top or on the bottom. So we could say sine of A over A is equal to sine of B over B. So as long as you keep it consistent, it doesn't matter which one's on top and which one's on the bottom. I kind of like to use the sine on top, but again, doesn't matter. They're proportions, so as long as you keep it consistent, it's the same thing. So again, this says we can write it in reverse. All right, so our first example. So here it gives us two angles and one side, and we have to find the missing angle and the other missing two sides. So first we wanna find the angle. How can we find angle A? What do all three angles in a triangle have to add up to? 180. So we're gonna add the other two that we have and subtract those from 180. So we have 102.3 plus 28.7, which is 131. Subtract that from 180. We get 49. So angle A is 49 degrees. So that took care of our angle. Now we have to find the missing sides. So we always wanna start with the proportion that we have that was given to us. So we have our angle B and our side B. So we're gonna say the sine of B. So 28.7 over our side length. So 27.4 is equal to, what do you wanna find first? Side C or side A? It doesn't matter, you just have to pick one. Side C. Let's find side C first. So since we're finding side C, we have to use angle C. So we're gonna say the sine of 102.3 over C. Now how do we solve for C? What do we need to do? Cross multiply. Cross multiply. So C, times the sine of 28.7 is equal to 27.4 times the sine of 102.3. You always wanna save the calculations for the end because if we did it right off to start out with, we would have to round our numbers and then we would just have to write all of our decimal places every time and when rounding, we may get an error. So now to solve for C, we divide both sides by sine of 28.7. And then we're gonna put this into our calculator. Okay, so we agree, 55.7. Now it'll tell you what to round to. This one doesn't, so we can just round it to one decimal place. What would our unit be? 
55.71 feet. Perfect. Since this side length was given to us in feet, C is also going to be in feet. All right, so now we found C. We have to do the same thing to find A. So what's our proportion going to be? So what's our angle A? So sine of 49 over A is equal to what? Now we can use B or C because we have both things for both of them. But I'm going to use B since B was the one that both things were given to us originally. So we have sine of 28.7 over 27.4. Now how do we solve for A? Cross multiply. So 27.4 times the sine of 49 is equal to A times the sine of 28.7. Divide both sides by the sine of 28.7. And then we just need to put this into our calculator. So A is equal to 43.1 what? Feet. So we got angle A side C, and side A. All the missing parts. Okay, sometimes we can either have no triangles that exist, one triangle that exists, or two different triangles. Whenever we have two angles and one side that's given to us, we have to check for any of these cases. So if we have two angles and one side, Oops, just kidding. It's two sides and one angle. Two sides and one opposite angle. So the last one, we had two angles and one side. We didn't have to check for one of these ambiguous cases. But if we ever have two sides and one opposite angle that's given, we have to check for these, which I'll explain when we get there. All right, so let's look at example two. We have a word problem, but nothing's different than what we just did. So again, we need to find all three of our sides. C is given to us, so we have to find A and B, and then angle A and angle B are given to us. What is the measure of angle B? So it's not exactly given, but if this little part is 8 and this part is 90, what's angle B? 98. 98. So how do we find angle C? Add the 2 and subtract from 180. So we have 98 plus 43. which is 141, and then 180 minus 141 is 39. So angle C is 39 degrees. Let's find side A. What would our proportion that we need to set up be? Find side A. Sine of 43 over A. Sine of 43 over A. And that's going to be equal to what? Sine of 39 over 22. Perfect. So since we have both parts for C, we have to set it equal to that. So then we have sine of 39 over 
22. Now we cross multiply to solve for a. So we get 22 times the sine of 43 is equal to a times the sine of 39. Divide both sides by 30, sine of 39. And then we put this into our calculator. All right, so that's side A. Now we have to find side B. So what should we do? Sine of 98 over B. Sine of 98 over B is equal to? Sine of 39 over 22. Perfect. Now we could either use our set of C's or our set of A's since we have both pieces of information for A now. But our set of C's works just fine. And that was the one that was originally given to us, so that's even better. So we need to cross multiply to solve for B. So 22 times the sine of 98 is equal to B times the sine of 39. Divide both sides by the sine of 39. So we found our side length for B, our side length for A, and our side C. Any questions on this one? So here we have two sides and one angle that's given. So we have to check and see if we have one solutions, no solutions, or two solutions. But we'll do that at the end. So whenever we have two sides and one angle, we have to check. My pencil is giving out on me, but you guys can read that. Two sides and one angle, we always have to check. So, what can we do here? Can't solve for the angle first because we only have one angle that's given. We can solve for the side. We can solve for the missing side. Can we though? Because we don't even have angle C. That's true. So we can solve for an angle first, which is what we have to do, but we can't solve it the way we did before where we subtracted it from 180. We actually have to put it into our law of sines formula. So we were given both sets of pieces of information for A. So we're going to say the sine of 42 over 22 is equal to what? sine b so since we had the sign on top for the last one we have to keep the sign on top so we would say the sine of b over 12 so we cross multiply so we have 12 times the sine of 42 is equal to 22 times the sine of B. Divide both sides by 22. And then we have to put this into our calculator. 
So what do we get for the sine of B? We're dividing by 22 because 22 was the measure that we had here. We're trying to find what the sine of B is. Oh, okay. So what did you get when you plugged in 12 times the sine of 42 divided by 22 in your calculator? Zero point three six. Now this is not our angle that we're looking for. Sine of B is equal to this. So we have to take the inverse of sine to find what our actual angle is. So we would put sine negative one of 0.36 in our calculator. And that will give us our B. So you have to click second sine and what does that give you? Twenty one. I got twenty one point four, but close enough. So twenty one point four degrees is our angle measure for B. Now we have two angle measures. How can we find C? We add the angle measures and uh, subtract it by 180. Yep. So 42 plus 21.4 is equal to 63.4. One eighty minus sixty three point four one sixteen point six so angle C is one sixteen point six degrees. Now, how can we find side length C? Sine of 116.6 over C. And what's that equal to? Sine 42 over 22. Perfect. Now how do we solve for C? Cross multiply. So 22 times the sine of 116.6 is equal to the sine of 42 times C. Divide both sides by the sine of 42. And then we put this into our calculator. Twenty nine point four. Anybody else agree? I agree. Okay. So C is equal to twenty nine point four what? Inches. All right. So here is when we have to check for our ambiguous case. Since we started with two sides and one angle, we have to check. So what we're going to do is set up a little chart. We have triangle 1 and triangle 2. We start with what was given to us. So we have angle A was 42. 
angle A is 42. In both of our possible triangles, angle A was given to us, that we have. Next, we found angle B. So angle B is 21.4. Now in our possible triangle two, we have to check for the supplement of B. So how do we find the supplement of an angle? One eighty minus twenty one point four. So what's one eighty minus twenty one point four? One fifty eight point six. Now we always have to check if we add these two together, what do we get? If we add forty two plus one fifty eight point six. These two, 42 plus 158.6. 200.6. If two angles in our triangle are 200.6, would that make a triangle? No, because two angles can't oh. be bigger than 180. So we only have one triangle here. So our second case does not work. So we only have one triangle, and these are our three measures of the missing parts. One, two, and three. Yes. Yes. Is equal to 15, B is equal to 25, and A is equal to 85 degrees. So again, it gives us two sides and one angle. So in this case, we would check if we have one triangle, two triangles, or no triangle. It kind of hints that we have no triangle, so we just have to show how. So what would be the proportion that we have to set up? What proportion would we set up? Sine of 85 over 15. Sine of 85 over 15. And what's that equal to? 25. Sine of B over 25. Perfect. So we're solving for sine of B. So let's cross multiply. We have 25 times the sine of 85. And that's equal to 15 times the sine of B. Divide both sides by 15. So then we put this into our calculator. And we get 1.66, but that's equal to the sine of B. Now, how do we find the angle B in our calculator? What do we have to do if we're looking for an angle? The inverse. So we have to do that sine negative 1 of 1 1.66. And what do you get? Domain error. Domain error or just error. That means we have no solution. So if you ever get domain error or just an error, it's not that you did something wrong. It's just we don't have a triangle here. So this is our no solution case. And one angle. So we need to check when we're done. If we are given two pieces of information for A and one thing for B, what should we find first? Solve for B. Solve for B. So we're solving for angle B. So what would be the proportion that we set up? Sine 
20.5 over 12. Of 20 over 12 yeah. is equal to? Sine of b over 21, 31. So we cross multiply 31 times the sine of 20.5 over is equal to 12 times the sine of b. Divide by 12. So what do we get for the sine of b? Zero point nine zero four. So now how do we find angle B? The inverse. So we do sine of the inverse of zero point nine oh four. What do we get? Sixty four point eight degrees. Anybody else get that? I did. Okay, perfect. So now that we have angle B, what can we find next? Angle C. Angle C. How do we find angle C? Awesome. Add them up and subtract from 180. So 20.5 plus 64.8 is 85.3. So 180 minus 85.3. gives us 94.7. Everybody else agree? So angle C is 94.7. All right, last thing we need to find is side C. What do we have to do to find side C? Set up our proportion. What's our proportion going to be? Sine of 94.7 over C is equal to? Sine of 64.8 over B, which is 31. Now we could have used our Pieces of information that we have for B, or we could have used A, doesn't matter, we'd get the same thing. So we have 31 times the sine of 94.7 is equal to C times the sine of 64.8. Divide both sides by the sine of 64.8. Let me put this into our calculator. Four point one four. What? Thirty four point one four what? Mm. Meters. All right, so we need to check now to see if we have another triangle out there. So we have triangle one and triangle two. The angle that we started with was angle A, so 20.5. First we found angle B, which was 64.8. Next we need to find 
the supplement of B. So what is our supplement? One eighty minus sixty four point eight, which is one fifteen point two. Now, if we add twenty point five plus one fifteen point two. What could our third angle be here for angle C? Like 55. So we got 135.7. Subtract 180 minus 135.7 and we get 44.3. which is different than our angle C that we found that was 94.7. So this is a second possible triangle that we can have. And we would also have to find side B and side C for our second triangle. So we would just have to use our information that was given for side A and angle A, and then our new angle B and new angle C and find side B and side C. So this is a case where we have two triangles. So this is more work. For All right, so I'm going to finish this problem because we have to find our B and our C for the side lengths of our second triangle. So we still use the same A. Oh, actually, B was given to us. So that was 31 meters. And A is 12 meters. So now we just have to find C. So we set up our proportion. We can say the sine of 20.5 over 12 is equal to the sine of 44.3 over C. So now we just have to find C. So cross multiply C times the sine of 20.5 is equal to 12 times the sine of 44.3. Divide both sides by the sine of 20.5. And then put this into our calculator. And we get C is equal to 23.9 meters. So this is C for our second triangle. So this C. So again, any time we have two sides and one angle, we have to check and make sure we are either going to have no triangles, one triangle, or two triangles. So here we had two triangles. Next, we're going to find the area of an oblique triangle. So we know our area of a triangle is one half base times height. And we're going to kind of use that same idea to find our area of an oblique triangle, so acute or obtuse. So here's our formula for the area of an oblique triangle. So anything that's not a right triangle, our area is 1 half b times c times the sine of a. So it's going to be the two sides that are given and the angle in between the sides. So notice here we have b, c, and a. In this formula we have a, b, and c, and in this one we have a, c, and b. So it's two sides and the angle in between the sides. So nothing repeats here. So we have to find the area of a triangle, a triangular lot having two sides of lengths 90 meters and 52 meters and an included angle of 102 degrees. So that included angle is in between, so we're good. So we're gonna plug this into our area formula. So we have 1 half times A times B, so 90 times 52 times the sine of angle C, so sine of 102. 
So we put this into our calculator. And then we get the area is 2,288.8. And this would be meters squared.